think it was 2017 when we did our inclusive design sprint and it was early pre-pro yeah. on Gears 5, right? And uh, it was great to have Gaming for Everyone help support us in that. It wasn't for game design, right? It was no. for design. Yeah. And so it didn't matter if you were a designer in our studio or not. It was just, here's some principles about inclusive design. Like, it's not like we hadn't ever talked about accessibility before. We had some accessibility features in Gears, Gears 4. 4. But it was sort of... But it was never a studio sort of discussion, right? right? It was always discussed inside either the design team or the production team or the UI team. And then we got to meet the subject matter experts. And then like you said, there was like a practical part of it where we started applying mm -hmm. the theory to ideas. To send them out into their teams and say, hey, this is an important thing that we should all think about. And yeah. creating that empathy for our players yeah. from that perspective. Like the secret yeah, magic true. of that inclusive design sprint was meeting the subject matter experts, yeah, obviously. So, for sure. Because they make it real and you speak to somebody and mm -hmm. you go, oh, I can help you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I want to help you. Like I, you just presented me a problem and I like solving problems. Like let me try and solve yeah. that problem, right? And I remember being in a room with one of them and he was just describing sort of, he could drive car games, but he couldn't play shooters because you know, the precision of the controls was different. And it was yeah. the feeling of the shooters that he missed more than the actual mechanics yeah. of them. And just realizing, like, not trying to design for exactly the mechanics right. that maybe we thought about, but, like, the experience that he wanted to be able exactly. to think about actual mechanics. talking about his shared experience with his brother yeah, and how important right. that was yeah. to him. Yeah. And yeah. That he yeah. was at home a lot. Yeah. He yeah. would play online, yeah. but he couldn't play the games he used to play. Yeah. yeah, and I think that resonated with us on Gears, actually. Like, Gears is maybe a, a weird game to think about as accessibility, but so core to our franchise is like, you know, being part of a squad and connectedness and inclusivity. like inclusivity. Yeah. It's a co-op game. It's always been a co-op yeah. game. Yeah. Think about all those yeah. people that, you know, are military, they were in a family and a brotherhood and they've lost an arm and they go back and yeah. they want to play Gears because it makes yeah. them feel like yeah. they're in their brotherhood again. And so you want to be inclusive, not exclusive. Totally. I remember the, uh, the woman who ran our inclusive design sprint yeah. and her talking about Imagine if someone doesn't have an arm, but imagine that they yeah. need the same things as a new dad who's sitting at home and has yeah, a baby has a in one arm, one arm and, and has a controller the in the other. Yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, right. Yeah. And that, I think, really stuck with a lot of people because yeah. everyone could relate to it. That was the opener for me, was that accessibility, you can't have accessibility without inclusivity. And for them, it was about being part of a community that they couldn't yeah. be part of. That community has a... Um, a slogan maybe is a good word for it, but they say nothing for us without us. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but we even renamed our, our like difficulty right, to include to a part of that. To yeah. have a more inclusive language, yeah. right? right? Instead of telling you You don't feel like you're bad at yeah, the game. Until instead of saying you were a casual, <laughs> we said you're a beginner because yeah. you're learning to become an intermediate yeah. and then yeah. to become, become experienced an and not yeah. casual and hardcore right. like that only happens when you're when your you know studio culture changes and you start looking at right. that. Right. About so it became a part of our stuff. studio culture yeah. and what we talk about in yeah. general, I mean, yeah. I, I, most features we talk about now, we, we tend to ask each other about the accessibility yeah. features behind it. You know, we have another thing that we talk about this way, which is honestly is performance and frame rate. It's something that like games understand a lot, <laughs> which is like, yeah. if you want a 60 frame FPS game, it becomes your studio culture. Like, I think we treated accessibility the same way. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, we already do this every day. Like yeah. we solve problems and design things every day. We just haven't applied it to this yeah. set of principles before. Right. I think yeah. sometimes you think about accessibility and you're like, how am I going to do this. It's like, yeah. it's not actually that yeah. difficult exactly. if you do it from the beginning. Yeah. It's like every feature in a game, like the longer it has to sit and get worked on, the better chance it is it's going to be good. So yeah, yeah, that time to have the features soak almost, yeah. and then they become a part of the social fabric of your studio yeah, and right. the game, yeah. where you're not really willing to live without them. Everybody who's been a developer knows that feeling of, yeah. if something's not in the game, it's hard to imagine it. If it's in the game, and it's even if it's not great yet, you're Everybody inherently it. wants to make it the best version <laughs> right. it can yeah. be. Yeah. The best features in games usually happen when two or three people on the floor are working on something and discussing it, yeah. not when mm -hmm. somebody in an office sends out an Isolation. email saying, I want yeah. this yeah. feature, please make it for you me. You know, when you're designing for accessibility from the ground up, it actually bubbles up into other features for your game that are great for everybody. You're not just making this feature for a tiny little group of people. There, there's all kinds of people you're benefiting. Yeah. And, and don't yeah. you want more people to play your game? Like, don't you want to invite and design people in rather than pushing them away from it? And that certainly helped us with Gears 5 is lots of people were talking about our accessibility features. It was organic and natural and people discovered totally. them and got excited about it. I think that was the best thing to see people saying, I'm going to play this game. I never would have considered playing it, mm -hmm. but now I'm going to.